have a special uh, person here that is joining us to share the word of God. Uh, his name is Scott and Anna. Uh, both of them ha has come and joined us uh, since last summer. Uh, and we have truly been blessed by their ministry, by their testimony, by their prayers. Uh, today, uh, and Scott and Anna has been a missionary in China for 30 years. And in Southeast Asia, Nepal and India for an additional 10, uh, 12 more years. Right? Uh, and uh, they are here with us. Uh, they have nine children. Can you believe it? They have nine biological children. Uh, but I want you to open up your hearts. I want you to welcome uh, our speaker today. Hey, I'm Jeff Seattle. Would you please give a warm welcome to Scott? Okay, good morning. Uh, I'll just get set up here for a minute. Okay. Abba Kabar. Ni hao. Shang du ju fu ni man. Jolly yo mei ran hui shua putong hua ma. Ige ran. Wow, ni shu zhong wa ran ma. Bang ran. Okay, I know most of you can, most of you are from Indonesia. Okay, let me just open this up. Yes, I've been really blessed by this church when I came. Uh, Anna and I had to leave China about five years ago. And uh, I've spent, I'm from Tacoma. I was born in, you know, in Portland, Oregon. I grew up here. And I uh, spent most of my life in Asia. So, uh, and we have an underground house church in China. And uh, usually it's all, you know, it's only mostly Chinese people. I'm the only white guy there, you know, but uh, I walked in his church and I go, wow, this is just like back in Asia. I feel at home. And I just love the atmosphere and people were friendly and uh, wow, I, I just love this place. So I'd been to, you know, a lot of different churches here in the Seattle area. And, um, but when I walked in here, I thought, wow, this is it. I'm back, man. This is so cool. I was so happy to be here. And uh, so, uh, uh, first thing I wanted to say, I just wanted to share a couple of verses on the Word of God. Now, as Christians, we all believe that the Bible is the Word of God, right? It's the Word of God? Yes. And Jesus, when he prayed in uh, John 17, 17, he said, he, he said, thy word is truth. Yes. So as Christians, we need to recognize that the Bible is the word of God and it's true. And what Jesus has said is true. He means it. If you take it as truth, it will work for you. It will work for you. If you have faith and you believe it, things will happen and things will be different. But we just have to believe it. We just have to have faith. Okay, so... I was asked to speak on Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. So let me just open this up. The Word of God. Do you all read the Bible? Yeah. Did you bring your Bibles today? <laughs> on your phone, your Bible? One other thing I like to, a verse just came to me. Psalms, uh, it's not up there. Okay, open your Bibles if you have one. To Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Let me get there. So, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree plant, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in his season, and whose leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There are literally hundreds of verses that talk about the word of God. And as Christians, we can't ignore it. 
if you want to walk with God, you need to know what the Bible says. And it's really important because, you know, you're going to meet a lot of different kind of Christians and you're going to hear a lot of different people preach online, in church, as you travel. But how do you know what they're saying is right? Now, if you study God's word, you're going to know. Because I've heard a lot of really amazing preachers in different places say something like, oh, wait a minute, is that in the Bible? Uh Uh-oh, because I've learned if it's not in the Bible, I don't have to believe it. I don't care who says it. I don't have to receive it. I don't have to agree with that. But I will agree with what he says. Because when I followed it, what I did, I saw amazing stuff. I've seen God move powerfully. And I really believe that Christians are much more powerful than they think. You as a Christian, if you have Jesus in your heart and you have the Holy Spirit, you have got the Spirit of God in you, which is so powerful, and you have no idea what you can do or what God can do through you. But the Word of God will build you up, and then you will see, and that is so important. And that's what's wrong with the church today. People don't read their Bibles. They just go along with traditions. And sometimes their lives are all messed up and they don't know why. What's going on, Lord? Where are you? It's been here all the time. Anyway, the word of God. I'm passionate about it. I love the word of God. Uh, Read Psalms 119. Whoa. That's all about the word. Okay, so uh, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. I was so excited when I heard the uh, announcement that the church was going to be going through the book of Acts this year, because I'm really passionate about witnessing, telling others about Jesus. And I'm passionate about people getting saved. I'm passionate about people getting healed. I'm passionate about people getting delivered and set free, because we as Christians can do this. You have all those abilities in you. We'll get to that in in a while here. But first, let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts 2. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, let me see here. The print's really small, so I'm going to use my reading glasses. Okay, so in Acts chapter 2, verses 14... Okay, Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known unto you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since this is only the third hour of the day. So this is just after. uh, At the beginning of chapter 2, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, just before Jesus left, he said, Okay, everybody go back to Jerusalem. Wait for the promise. It's coming. So they were all pretty excited. They obeyed. So 120 people got together in one room. And the Spirit of God came. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were praising God. They were speaking in tongues. And all kind of amazing things were happening. And they went out on the streets. And they were witnessing. And people from all over that part of the world were there. And they heard Uh, the wonderful words of God being spoken through these people in their own languages. It was a phenomena. So a lot of people think, these guys are crazy. They're drunk. What's going on? So he's explained to me, hey, you guys, it's only only nine o'clock in the morning. You know, how could these guys be drunk? You know, people are usually drunk in the night. And then he goes on, what's happening here is a prophecy that's being fulfilled as we go on. It says, uh, okay, verse 16. And this was what was spoken of by Joel the prophet. He knew the word, boy. So here's the prophecy, and he's quoting this. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Okay, last days. When's the last days? Well, the last days started with the new covenant until the time Jesus came. It talks about that in Hebrews, Hebrews one and two. You can read that there. That's when it started. So it's in the last, it's a long time. Now Jesus hasn't come back yet, but we're still in the last days. 
So he's pouring out a spirit on all flesh. Those that are in the new covenant, he's pouring out a spirit on us. That's you guys. So he's talking about you here in this prophecy too. So when you read things like in the word of God, he's talking about you. You can take that and you can run with it and you can live it and you can do it. So it says, uh, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. You guys can do that. Young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Man, I dream all the time, man. (laughs) I dream crazy stuff. And I've seen, I've had some amazing stuff happen. We'll get to that soon. And on my men servants and my, my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Everybody gets to play. Men, women, doesn't matter who you are. A man, a woman, doesn't matter what language you speak or where you came from. Your education doesn't mean anything. It doesn't impress God. He looks at your heart. It's all there. He says, I will show wonders in heaven and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Wow. People are going to be saved. Lives are going to be changed. But how is that going to happen? How are these people going to get saved? Is God just going to come down and save everybody? Where is he? Where's Jesus today? Do we see Jesus walking down the street? No. He's gone. He left. Does anybody here know where Jesus is today? Anybody? Where's Jesus? Huh? In your heart. He's in you. He wants to work through you. He loves you. There's so much he wants to do with you. And so when you read your Bibles, you'll learn about him. You'll find out who he is. I mean, a little bit about me now. I'll tell you a little bit about my testimony. I'll keep it short. Uh, I'll give you the short version. Uh, When I was seven years old, some interesting things happened to me. My mother was a Baptist, my father was agnostic, and she used to take my brothers and I, I have two brothers, to church every Sunday, and we would listen. And actually, as a seven-year-old, I used to listen to the pastors. And I don't know if you've ever been to a Baptist church, but they're really, in my day, it was like, get saved, or you're going to die, or you're going to go to hell. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, what about my life? I didn't know, I was just a kid. And uh, then something happened one day. Uh, I'm from Tacoma, I'm a Tacoma boy. And a friend of mine, his, uh, he, they had a swimming pool in their backyard. And so I was over there one summer swimming. He was six, Tommy Murphy and I and his mom. And his mom went into uh, the house to get something. And I had a little ring around me. So I run and I jump in the swimming pool and I go right through the ring. All of a sudden I'm drowning. <laughs> water's going down my throat and I'm, and I'm looking up at Tommy Murphy and he's laughing at me because he thinks I'm playing. He's only six years old. I'm drowning. I'm terrified. I'm going to die. And then somehow I just said, God save me. And just then something pushed my feet up and all of a sudden my head was above the water. And one of the neighbors uh, ran, saw and jumped in and saved me. But I got out of that pool and I was thinking God must have done that and I was starting to think about God like wow now I've almost died four times in my life so there was an element of fear in my life of dying because I thought when you die what happens man it's like you you dive into this mass darkness of bottomless pit and you cease to exist and that used to terrify me and uh so another thing happened, I, I went to church and I was listening to the pastor and he talked about receiving Jesus. So I did, you know, I, well, back in those days, they had what you call altar calls. I don't see that much in America nowadays. At the end of the, uh, uh, at, 
at the end of the service, you know, people would come up and they'd receive Jesus in their hearts. So I did that. So I went up there and I shook this guy's hand and I prayed and I received Jesus. And uh, I used to take my, you know, I'd go home and I'd open up the Bible. And I remember looking at it and think, what does all this mean? I remember look, looking at Ezekiel and Isaiah and I'm like, scratch me. What is this all about? What does this mean? And then one night I was uh, uh, sleeping in my bed, my little bed. And my bed was sort of pushed up against the wall. And I'm like sleeping like this. My head's facing the wall. And uh, I woke up, opened my eyes like, wow. It was quiet. And I felt like somebody standing beside my bed. I couldn't hear anything. Who is that? I was thinking. And I was afraid. But I couldn't hear anything. I, I just sensed it because there was something in the room. Something really big, I thought. So I slowly turned over, and right beside my bed, there was somebody standing in this white gown, and it was an angel. It wasn't something you just see. Now, I didn't tell people this for a long time, because I didn't think anybody would believe me. But I was visited as seven years old, and uh, I, can't, I can still see it in my mind's eye, but I can't even explain what it looked I, I didn't see the face, but I saw the whole body. And it was like this white gown. of It was just not earthly. And I rolled it, and I, I'm looking at it. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I looked at it long enough to know it's real. And I put my head back down. Now, I know it wasn't a dream because I didn't sleep that whole night. I laid there for another five hours without moving. And my whole body felt really stiff and achy. And I'm laying there. This was summertime. And outside uh, my room, the, the window was open, and there was a, a bush, and there was birds that were kind of chirping and singing. And I slowly turned to the room, and there was nothing there. I didn't know what I was going to find. And there was this amazing peace. And I sat up, and I thought, wow. I never told anybody for years. Because you don't hear stuff like that. But the thing is, God's moving in a lot of different ways. And I've had people say, well, that never happened to me. And I'm saying, well, I'm sorry. You know, maybe, maybe I was just so dull. And, but, but he visited me. So growing up, I, I got away from God. And uh, uh, I got away from the Lord. Became a naughty boy. Uh, I was always afraid to speak against Jesus. I never denied him. I, was, I had a fear of God there, even though I wasn't walking with God. And then I, uh, actually, I come from the, you know, the Woodstock generation. I was a hippie. I had hair down to here. Now I got no hair, you know, but back then I had hair almost down to my elbows. And I, I did a lot of things I shouldn't. I, I smoked pot every day and I took stuff like LSD and mescaline and all these other drugs because I was searching. I was still searching. I had been given the truth at a very young age. And amazing things had happened. And other things happened. But then when I was in Hawaii, uh, I met people from the Jesus movement. And that's where... Uh, and at that time, I didn't like Christians. I hated Christians. Because I... You know, people would call me a freak. You know, I, I had long hair before it became mainstream. It was very different. But uh, these guys witnessed to me. And uh, I, was sitting on, uh, I was sitting on the beach one day in Waikiki, and I was looking at all these people. There was a lot of wealthy people there. And, and I, I was looking at this one guy that was smoking this big fat cigar. He looked really rich, and he'd get up and he'd jump in the water. And he'd dry off and he'd put on his, uh, uh, you know, suntan lotion. He's going back and forth and back and forth. And I'm thinking, well, what is life all about? Is that it? Where we're born, we get an education, we get a good job, we make money, then we have nice vacations, we, and then we have kids, and they do the same thing and they die. Well, what is life all about? What am I going to do with my life? I was confused. And the whole beach looked really dead. It's like everybody was on the meat racks trying to roast themselves and look more beautiful and, and uh, try to live a good life. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, having a, a good life. But I was thinking it, and all of a sudden I heard this 
this music. Somebody was playing this music, this beautiful guitar music. And this group of people came out. And they started dancing around in a circle. And, uh, and everybody sat up on the beach. And they turned around and looked. And everybody was smiling. I thought, wow, that's life. It gave me goosebumps. And then I heard the, I heard the song. I heard the, I heard the word Jesus. Uh-oh. It's those religious people again. And they broke up the twos and they went around. They were talking to people. I think, oh no, this guy's going to come talk to me. Uh oh. And he looks over at me and I look away. And, and uh, I'm kind of like trying to be cool. And I, I look over. He looks at me and I look away. And I go, oh no. And he walks over and he has a guitar. He says, hey, can I play you a song? Oh, I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And uh, uh, he played really well, very skillful. So he started playing the song. And the words went something like, one day I took an honest look. I tried everything. I played everything in the book. But then when I came to Jesus, it changed my life. And I was like, whoa. I was stunned. So he said to me, um, oh, what are, you doing in the, what are you doing over here in Hawaii? And I said, oh, I just came here to party and have a good time. And I said, I got bored in the States. He said, what were you doing there? Oh, I was just kind of partying and having a good time. But I'm, and I said, but I'm going, I'm flying to Amsterdam next month. And I'm going to, so what are you going to do over there? Oh, I'm going to backpack around. I'm going to party. He says, isn't that why you came here? It's like, boing. I thought, who is this guy? And everything he was saying to me was speaking right to my heart. And he started telling me about his life. And I thought, wow, I just felt like a big spotlight was on me. I felt like the conviction of God was right there. I couldn't deny it. God was real. All these things were happening and my mind, things started flooding in my mind about life and things that happened to me. And he said, hey, if you'd like to have some Bible studies, you can come over to our place. We're living out on the other side of the island. I said, okay, man, that's cool. No, that's, that's not so good for me. So he left. So I was like, oh my goodness. And I just stood up and I started walking. And I walked from Waikiki Waik Beach down Calacala Boulevard all the way down. And, uh, and I walked all the way back, something like six miles. And I'm just thinking about my life. What is truth? How am I going to live my life? What am I going to do? How much time do I have on this earth? What am I doing here? What's going on? I could feel like there was God was right there. I went and I sat in this park. And uh, I just sat in this park. There's this huge park by the volcano there in Hawaii. And I just kind of crossed my legs and I just, I just started to repent. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I know you're real. I'm sorry, Jesus. I started repenting of my, my sins. And I said, I, I don't know what to do, man. Uh, I said, I, I, I'm so messed up. Just, just come back. Take me back. I'm sorry. I started to repent. And, uh, and uh, you know, now at that time, I had very long hair. And a couple of times I, I went to church. And back in those days, you know, back in the, in the early 70s, you know, some, some churches weren't very welcoming if you came in as a hippie. You know, it's kind of like, What's that guy doing here, man? And so I didn't like Christians. I hated them. So I said, I said, God, I'd do anything for you. I would do anything you ask me. But please, don't ask me to go back to church. It's so boring, that church I went to. I don't want to go back there. But I like you. I love you. You saved me. I give you my life. And then I said something that changed my life forever. I said, Jesus, I said, just fill me with your Holy Spirit. I didn't know what that meant. I'd heard about it and I got this baptism. I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, this is another thing I didn't tell anybody for a long time, but this really happened. I'm sitting there cross-legged and all of a sudden there was this open vision. Heaven opened up above my head. <gasps> I could see it. And all of a sudden, everything around me went blurry. Has anybody, have you seen the Lord of the Rings movie? Okay. Lord of the Rings. Now there is a part in there where they're riding the horses. Now that was very demonic where they're riding these horses in slow motion. And you can't see things and things are going back and forth, you know. Well, that's sort of something like that happened to me. I'm sitting there and I'm looking around. And I wasn't on drugs. I was not on drugs. <laughs> that day I was really straight. But this, I never had an experience on drugs like this. And I'm, my, I'm sitting there and everything's going in and out. I can't focus my eyes and everything's in slow motion. I'm going, Jesus, like I'm underwater. And, it's, and all of a sudden I, I, I felt like I was going to levitate. And I just, and I jumped up. I said, no, God, stop this. I can't take this. Please. 
I can't take this. All of a sudden, whoosh, everything went back to normal. I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, oh my God is real. God is real. Oh my goodness. I got to get a hold of this. What am I doing? My life. And right then, from there, my life changed. Amen. I went after God. I said, I'm all in, God. I'm all in. I'll push everything in, man. All the chips to the center of the table. I'm in, God. You can have everything I own. I didn't own anything hardly, you know. <laughs> so you can have me. You can have my money. You can have my clothes. You can have everything. And from then on, uh, my life got kicked off. And so I, from then on, I walked with, I've been walking with God for about 50 years. I'm 70 years old. Doing pretty good. Good health. Don't have to take any medicine. Uh, every day is good. And uh, now, I started serving God. And uh, with these, these hippie Christians, they started giving me Bible studies. And, they, and we'd go out on the, on the beach every day. We'd go witnessing. And so every day, I went out for about two weeks. And these other guys had been Christians a while. And they're, they're praying with like 10 people a day. Three, sometimes three people, four people, sometimes 20 people all day. And I'm sitting there watching this stuff. And I'm, I'm looking at these, we're witnessing a lot of the hippies. I'm seeing people's lives change before my eyes. Oh man, oh God, this is so good. And then one day, uh, I was with this guy. I said, okay. And there was these two uh, Japanese university students that were sitting on the, on the, on the street, you know, like all the, everybody else. And he says, okay, uh, now you're going to do it. I go, what? He said, you witness to these people. Me? No, I can't do that. Are you kidding me? I was scared to death. He said, no, you, go, you can talk to these guys about Jesus, you know. I said, no, no, man, you do it. You're good at this. I'm not, man. I, I'm still new at this. And he says, do you know what John 3.16 says? I said, yeah. He said, quote it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So there you go. That's enough to get somebody saved. I said, okay, I'll try it, I'll try it. Uh, I was so nervous. So I walked up and I, I sat down. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know, sit down. Said, Where are you from? Oh, Japan, well. And so I started telling them what happened to me, how I received Christ. And they listened and uh, they ended up praying and ask, asking Jesus in their heart. I was shocked. I said, well, would you like to give your, would you like to give your uh, life to, to Jesus? And this guy said, Yes, I would. And he was sincere. I looked at him. I said, well, you know, we can, we can, we can pray. He goes, okay. Well, how do you do that? So I led him in this prayer. And the guy gets born again. I said, wow, I can do this, man. It's not that hard. I can do it. I can lead people to Christ. And then I just, from then on, I was just captivated with this. So I've been doing this for many, many years, just leading people to Jesus. And along the way, uh, I've made a lot of mistakes and I was taught a lot of stuff that I had to, I saw that wasn't right. I mean, the basics were good. The basics were right. You know, that there's one God and Jesus Christ, is the son of God, and the Bible is the word of God. And we need to tell people about Jesus. And then I, I, I just really saw, I needed to really dig into the Bible and find the truth because this is truth. Jesus said, this is truth. Cause when you follow this, you're not going to go wrong. And then you get the Holy Spirit. You know, in Acts 1.8, it says that the power will come out on you after you receive the Holy Ghost and you'll be witnesses in, in all the world. You got the Holy Spirit, man? Whoa! You got a lot. Now, you don't have to get the Holy Spirit the same way I did. And there's a lot of churches that teach a lot of different things. Jesus said, if you wanted the Holy Spirit, you just had to ask for it. And if you believe it, you got it. Just like salvation. Now, sometimes people can lay hands on you and pray for you and you get the Holy Spirit and things can happen. Because, you know, just as we read here in uh, Psalms 2, that there are, you know, there's, there's prophecy, there's all kinds of stuff, there's signs and wonders, there's dreams, and there are, there's amazing things. And, uh, and some years later, I came across a very interesting teaching. It was... Uh, it was called the new creation and uh, the new man. And it talks about, it. Oh, I, I'd read those verses. I even memorized these verses. But then when I started to study them 
And I started to listen to some of uh, uh, some teachings on it. I thought, wow, this is powerful. This is an upgrade. So if you look at 2 Corinthians 5.17, that says, open your Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.17. This will get you started on this. This is, this is, this is a really amazing teaching. Okay, 5... Oh, 2 Corinthians, I'm in first. Love the Bible. Oh, man. Save me. Really did. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So when Jesus came in, there's a, there's a, oh, there's tons of verses on this. Jesus comes in, your spirit and his spirit become one. He lives in you. So everything Jesus had, you got. I was like, oh, that's an interesting thought. And I started digging these words. What do you mean? Everything Jesus had, we got. We, you know, and the Bible says that we are sons and daughters of God, right? And uh, so I started learning all about this. Like, wow, new creation, okay, you know. And uh, I started following some of this stuff and reading, reading all these scriptures about who I was in Christ. And you'll find a lot of this teaching in the book of Ephesians. Look at Galatians, Philippians, uh, uh, Colossians, and uh, Ephesians. Paul taught about this. He was passionate. He said, this is, the mystery has been revealed. that has been held for many, many generations. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's in there and he wants out. You know where it says in John 7, uh, uh, it was it John seven forty eight? Where out of my belly, out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. That's the Holy Spirit. So everything Jesus did, we are capable of doing it. Now there's a verse I read here. Now over the years, there's been certain verses that troubled me. I didn't understand. What does that mean? And uh, when I was reading uh, in John chapter fourteen. This is one verse that kind of used to freak me out. Well, I just thought, and I'll read it to you. Some years ago, and I was reading through this, and some of my favorite passages are, are, are uh, chapters John uh, 14 and 15. And on verse 12, Jesus is talking to his disciples. Are you guys disciples? Okay, he's speaking to you too. So, and I used to read this, and it says, Believe me I, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else, no, no, verse, uh, no, 12, yeah, yeah, or else believe me for the sake of the works. Okay. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he'll do also. So we're going to do the same works that Jesus did, and he says, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. I used to read that. Go wait, you know, that's that's Jesus being nice to us. You know, Jesus was so kind. He's so good. You know, kicker is he's better than we think because we're still discovering a lot of this new stuff. You read your Bibles, your eyes are going to get opened. So anyway, so I read that verse. I, ah, Jesus just being nice, and the Holy Spirit said deep in my heart, said, "Do you believe that?" I said, well, I'm not Jesus. Come on. And the Holy Spirit said, do you believe that? And I was shocked because the Holy, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And I could hear it clear as a bell deep inside me. <gasps> and I was thinking, I always tell people, I believe everything in the Bible. And I said, Lord, I need to repent. Because I have to admit, I never believed that. I don't think you meant that. I thought you were just being nice. I said, but I repent. Okay, 
I can do what you did. Now, I'm not there. I'm not on the same level as Jesus. But according to what he's telling us, we can do these things. If you don't believe it, then you're denying what Jesus said. But then how do we get there? Okay, this is the fun part. You can do this stuff. And so I learned all about that. And then I had a friend that uh, came to visit me. And, uh, you know, some years back in China, he was talking about healing, about how amazing. Now, over the years, I always was taught if somebody's sick, you pray for them. Maybe they get healed. Maybe they don't. That's up to God. But I find out it doesn't say that in the Bible. Healing? So, my, so this old friend came and four old friends were together, these Christians. And uh, so my friend's talking about this. You know, he said, you know, you, know, you, can, you know, if you pray for people, people can get healed and it can happen all the time and a lot. And I said, well, I don't see much, but occasionally something happens. And then one of the guys said, you know, I got a shoulder, you know, it hurts. It hurts really bad. He says, I can't, I can only lift this height, it hurts. So my friend says, okay, you guys, let's pray for him. So he puts his hand on and he prays for him. He says, in the name of Jesus, I command healing to come into his shoulder right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. And he goes, okay, test it out. So the guy goes, I couldn't do that. Wow, what did you do? It feels hot in there. What's going on? And I'm like, whoa. And the guy said, it's normal. I thought, wow. So he said, I'm not kidding you, Scott. Listen, this is just an upgrade on your, your witnessing. So then I started learning about healing. And I found out that it's for everybody. Any Christian can do it. But then it comes back down to, you have to know who you are in Christ. You have to know what you've got, what he's given you. And uh, of course, we have to stop here soon, so I can't go very deep into this. But the thing is, if you have faith as of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. And, and, and Jesus said the mountain will move if you believe it. Now, when you don't believe it, it doesn't move. If you say, I can't do it, you can't. But Jesus says you can, you can do it if you believe what Jesus said. Now, that, now there's, a, there's a whole lot of teaching that this goes up. To. I'm just hitting a few things that I went through. But I, I do want to encourage you, as Christians, you are more powerful than you can imagine. Because if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, he can do the works through you. Now, when I, I pray and things happen, but it's not me. I mean, when I share testimonies, look, I'm not, I'm not looking for any pats on the back. And I don't get any credit for this because it's not me. Because it's Jesus Christ in me when things happen. Every year, uh, I, I spend about three weeks to a month in Nepal, about three weeks, and, I, we, and uh, a mission trip, and uh, we hike up to the Tibetan border, you know, up to about 4,000 meters, and every year, we see between 80 to 110 people get healed within a week, just by praying for people, because, of course, up there, there's no, there's no uh, motorcycles, no, nothing is, everything is portered in, so all these people are carrying things, you know. And, you know, I ask people, hey, how you doing? Oh, my knee hurts. Can I pray for you? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And they pray for it. And about 50 or 60 people get born again. Because I found when I tried to, to witness to a, a, a Tibetan about Jesus, oh, they don't want to hear it. But they got a bad back and I touched their back and they get healed. Like, what is this, man? Dude, what's going on? Whoa, how's that? And I said, well, that ain't me. It's because I believe in Jesus Christ, the son of God. Amen. He died on the cross and he rose from the dead. And the Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed. Yeah. And we have that. And when you, come into the, when you come into this teaching, you can do this too. Anybody can. You just got to know that you got, you, you, you've got the spirit of God in you. Jesus isn't here. So we're supposed to do the works of God today. In fact... Uh, I got something I call the mandate of heaven. And, uh, okay, now everything I'm talking about here, uh, okay, I'm talking about this. There's a lot of teaching that goes into this and learning about it, but I'm just touching on a little bit, being really brief. But first of all, if you've got the Holy Spirit, you can do anything Jesus did. We're not up to his level, but he told us we could. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to do it. 
Because I used to think, well, you know, and it was like, is, is Jesus playing with us by telling us these things? Is, if Jesus said we can do it, we can do it. Look, look what he told his disciples in Matthew 10, chapter 1. You know what that says? Matthew 10, 1. Whoa, now we're getting into this stuff. Okay, we're going to stop here in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to hit just a couple more things, and we're going to stop and pray. Jesus name, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We don't even ask you, we don't even have to invite you because you're already here, Holy Spirit. Okay. Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power, authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and disease and all everything. And the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. It hasn't changed. He still means it today. Look at verse 7 and 8. And he said, go, preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely do it. Now, it's very interesting when you start to read these healing verses. I always used to pray, God, heal this person. Didn't happen very much occasionally. But when I started to speak, when I started to realize what I had in me, I started to command like them. You can command sickness to go in the name of Jesus. If you know who you are and you got it in you, it'll happen. Now, I don't have 100%. Not everybody I've prayed for that's been sick has gotten healed. In the beginning, it, it was slow. And all of a sudden, I started getting more and more and more, and I started seeing amazing things happen. Six months ago, a friend called up from uh, uh, China, you know, in our little house church, and she calls up and says, Scott, Scott, my head hurt, and I went to the hospital, and they said, I got a brain tumor. They want me to stay in the hospital. I don't want to stay in the hospital, and I'm scared. What am I going to do? And I said, well, Winnie, you got Jesus in your heart? Yes. You have the Holy Spirit? Yes. Why? I says, well, it's going to be all right. I says, and we can pray? He goes, okay, okay. So I pray for her. Right on the phone. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this cancer to go. Get out right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Short prayer. She goes, oh, she goes, the pain left. It feels better. She goes, they want me to come back to the, to the hospital. I said, well, that's up to you. you, you know, just, it, there's nothing wrong with going in to get it checked. Go in, get it checked. It's up to you. And then you can make a decision if you want to stay in the hospital or you don't. She goes, okay, okay. I feel better, Scott. Thank you for praying for me. Hang the phones up. Four days later, I get a phone call back. Scott, Scott, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I said, what happened? I went to the hospital. They scanned it. It's gone. I'm healed. I said, well, you better thank the Lord because if you say you don't believe it, it might come back. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to build myself up here. Like I said, I'm not looking for pats on the back because I didn't do it. All I did was pray. And I have prayed for people that have had cancer and died. And I don't like that. I hate what Satan does to people. And I believe that all sickness and disease is from the devil. I don't believe Jesus. If you look at Je Jesus is perfect theology. Did he ever put sickness on anybody? Okay, he cursed a tree. That's a different thing though. But, it, you know, like a lot of people say, oh, man, God hurt my hip. And I'm so thankful for it. It's getting me closer. What do you mean? You think God, you think he's going to break your hip or something and heal you just to show how good he is? That wouldn't be a very good God. What about you? You're going to break your son's arm and, and take him to the hospital doctor and say, look what I did for you. That's, that's twisted. That's not Bible. That's why it is so important to read your Bibles and study them. And ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you. And he will. Because you're amazing people. You're all people in here that are seeking God, right? And those of you who don't know, you know, we as Christians, we believe that there's one God. And he's a good God. And he loves us. He's not angry at us. In fact, he sent his son to die on the cross 
to be punished for all your sins. And if you're sorry for your mistakes, you can receive him in your heart and you can have a whole new life. Amen. You can have eternal life. And it starts now. It's not just waiting to go to heaven. It's here right now. But for us Christians, we're supposed to do the Bible. He's, he's actually commanded us to preach the gospel. Now, I'm saying you got to be a pastor. I'm not saying you got to be a missionary or a Bible teacher. But if you're a Christian, please at least tell people about Jesus. Speak to your family. Speak to your friends. Speak to people that you work. You know, there's so many ways. Follow God. When you go after him, you'll get it. But a lot of Christians are kind of Sunday Christians. Well, they show up in church. Okay, go back. You know, and the guy got Jesus smart. I'm going to heaven. That's it. But be, be like the Christians in the book of Acts. Be a real one that loves God passionately. Come in to be who you are. Okay, so that's... Now, there's a lot more teaching on healing. There's things to learn, but it's very simple. There's a lot of teaching on the, the new man, the new creation that's in you, who you are and what you've got. So it's very, very limited. So actually, I was talking with Pastor uh, Irwin just before we got up here, and we thought, uh, you know, after we, after everybody prays and uh, when things, you know, gets done, if you have any pain in your body, if you're sick, if you need healing, then you can, after, you can come down here, and, and we're going to pray for you. If you've got any pain in your body. Now, in every setting, there's always people with back pain. In fact, we prayed for one person today. Came in. His, his back was hurting for two weeks. Prayed for him. Bang. He got healed. It's gone. It's like, whoa. He's like, ah. <laughs> he laughed. He's like, hey, it's gone. Right? Then that happened. He got healed just, just this morning. So if you got, maybe some people have neck pain. Anybody got neck pain? Yeah. Okay. Anybody got back pain? Okay, there's back pain. Anybody got things going, other things going on? Even more serious stuff? Okay, there's serious stuff too. God can heal anything. So if you want afterwards, just come down here. And Pastor Irwin and I, we're going to pray for people. And there's going to be some healings. There's already one person that's been healed. We prayed for one person today. And he's been healed. And, and if you don't know Jesus Christ and you want to receive him into your heart, come up and talk to us. You can get born again. Have eternal life, man. You don't have to worry about dying or have in fears. Or if you have some really traumatic things going on, we could pray. We could pray against different things, all kinds of things. Okay, so I just want to say that I really love this church. I'm really blessed. I'm really thankful that I'm here. And there's just so many wonderful people here. I mean, everybody I meet, amazing people. I love listening to people. If I don't know you, Come up to me, introduce yourself. I like to meet new people. We can talk. We can have conversations. So, anyway, uh, thank you, Pastor Juan, for inviting me to speak. God bless you.